Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Airplane Anatomy. In this series, I break down different airplanes from their history to their engineering to how they fly. So today in episode 11, we're going to be talking about one of the most unique looking planes out there. In fact, when pilots saw it for the very first time, they laughed and said, this thing can't fly. That is the F-117 Nighthawk, one of the most stealthy, well-engineered, yet mysterious planes out there. Now this was actually one of the first aircrafts we designed with modern stealth concepts, and for a few years it was the most invisible plane in the skies. Now it's a little known fact that despite its fighter designation, the F-117 was actually an attack aircraft. So at this point you might have a lot of questions, like why was it given the wrong name, and why is it so weird looking, and what makes it so special? Well we're gonna break all of that down in today's episode, so stay tuned. The year was 1964 and there has just been a major breakthrough that shook the entire aviation industry. So for many decades, people believe that the larger the surface area of a plane, the larger its radar signature. In other words, they believe that the main factor that determined the stealth of an aircraft was its size. That's pretty intuitive. But in 1964, a Soviet physicist by the name of Peter Yufimsev discovered that the strength of the reflection of radar waves is actually due to the shape of an object namely its edges and not its size. Now, Soviet Union at that time actually allowed Yufimsev to publish his results in academic journals since they believed that this would have very limited applications in the real world and would have, quote, no economical or military value. Of course, they were soon proven wrong because at the same time across the pond at Lockheed, a team called Skunk Works, this was also the team that developed the SR-71 and many of its advanced aircrafts at that time, was also reading this result and realized that these findings from a Soviet physicist was going to revolutionize the future of stealth aircraft. This would enable them to create aircrafts that were harder to detect and track than ever before. So with this, Lockheed underwent a new mission to create the stealthiest aircraft the world has ever seen, and they nicknamed this project Half Blue. So around the 70s, the designs for the eventual F-117 Nighthawk began. From these new discoveries in the world of stealth technology, the engineers at Lockheed came up with a brand new aircraft with very weird looking tiles that are all arranged in sharp angles in order to deflect radar waves in different directions. Now this is similar to how on a diamond, all the tiny little surfaces are pointing in different directions to help reflect lights. Now I go more into depth about how radar and stealth technology works in my B2 video, so feel free to go check that out if you're curious. Many of the exterior components on the F-117, like the landing gear, the cockpit canopy, and its access panels, all had sawtooth edges, and this was to limit radar reflection as well. And similar to many aircrafts, like the SR-71 Blackbird or the B-2 Spirits, the F-117 also had a coat of radar-absorbing material on the outside as well. But in this attempt to maximize stealth, there were also some trade-offs that had to be made, namely instability and reduced thrust and lift. The biggest was instability, so in order to optimize the edge configurations for stealth, they actually ended up with an incredibly non-aerodynamic body that was very unstable to fly and also just didn't want to stay in the air. So in order to combat this, the engineers came up with a quadruple redundancy fly-by-wire system that had computers that would compensate for this instability. But many times on a lot of fighter jets, instability is actually a desired trait because it makes them more maneuverable. But this is often in combination with very powerful engines and also afterburners, which was not the case for the 117. The engineers also wanted to reduce the infrared signature of the aircraft as well, which is mainly determined by the heat it emits. So for this reason, the F-117 did not have afterburners and its engines were actually muffled and soundproofed in order to reduce their noise emission as well. So the engine inlets were covered by a very fine mesh that was coated in a radar absorbing material and its engine exhausts were very small slits to reduce heat emission but also speed up the rate at which it would combine with the cool ambient air. But all of these factors combined Combined limited the performance of the engines, which meant that the F-117 was restricted to flight at subsonic speeds. But that was actually a good thing because this meant that the surface of the aircraft would be kept cooler and also there would be no sonic booms. And since the Nighthawk was designed to be an attack aircraft and not a fighter, this wasn't really a big deal. 
And also because of the stealth configuration, the F117 ended up with a very low wing aspect ratio, which is the ratio between the length and the width of the wing. Typically, when aspect ratios decrease, so does lift production, which was definitely the case here. Now you'll notice that the plane does not have any horizontal stabilizers where the elevators typically would be. Instead, it had four elevons that were located on the trailing edges of the wings. These elevons served as both the elevators and the ailerons, hence its name, and controlled the pitch and roll of the aircraft respectively. But because of their placement, the F-117 actually didn't have any flaps, which are typically very crucial to help slow the rate of descent for an aircraft during landing, so that it could slow down without stalling. So without flaps, the F-117 17 actually landed at very high speeds and relied on a drag parachute instead to slow down. At that time, it was actually a pretty common practice for many military jets. And as you can probably imagine, the production and testing of this aircraft was extremely secretive. Since a lot of the components on this new aircraft were derived from pre-existing models like the F-15, F-16, and the A-10, during production, a lot of the F-117's parts were actually listed as spares for these other aircrafts so that employees didn't know that a new aircraft was being built. And after taking its maiden flight on 1981, the Air Force actually denied the existence of the F-117 for seven more years until finally releasing a very grainy and photoshopped photo of the aircraft in 1988. The US actually went so far to cover up the existence of this plane that when one crashed during testing, killing the pilot and starting a fire, the US actually placed a overhead airspace restriction to the altitude of infinity over the crash site and actually replaced the wreckage from the remains of a previous F-101 voodoo crash so that if people went to look for clues at the crash site afterwards, they wouldn't be able to find any. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the F-117, despite being an attack aircraft, was named with a fighter designation. Now, a lot of people at that time speculated that this was for the US government to hide this new development from the Soviet Union. But the real reason was, as later confirmed by an Air Force official, that they just simply wanted to attract the top pilots in the Air Force to fly this new plane. But these pilots were generally just more attracted to planes with fighter designations. So they ended up giving this attack aircraft a fighter designation. And with that, the Nighthawk officially entered service in 1983. After entering service, the Nighthawk really lived up to its name of being the invisible plane. Despite being 20 meters long and having a wingspan of 13 meters, the Nighthawk actually had a radar signature of just 0.01 meters squared, about that of a small bird. And over its 25 years of service, only one of the 59 Nighthawks ever produced were shot down. And this was in 1999 over Yugoslavia by a surface-to-air missile. Because of its stealth, the F-117 was the only aircraft that was capable of striking targets within the city limits of Baghdad, which was an incredibly heavily armed area during the Gulf War. Now at that time, there were around 3,000 anti-aircraft artillery and also 76 surface-to-air missile launchers that were surrounding the city, but still the few dozen Nighthawks came back without a scratch. And the aircraft itself was highly performant as well. It actually still holds the record today for performing the longest non-stop flight for a single-seat fighter aircraft, and that was between Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico and Kuwait, a flight that lasted 18 and a half hours with aerial refueling. And here we are complaining about our 12-hour flights with meal service and reclining seats. But the Nighthawk wasn't perfect, especially since countries were now quickly catching up in developing their radar technology. So for example, the Nighthawk was actually only designed for stealth against radars that were operating at certain frequency bands. So eventually, radars with low enough frequencies were developed that were able to actually detect these stealth aircrafts. So because of this, during operations like Operation Desert Storm, Apache attack helicopters actually had to be sent in ahead of time to conduct the first raid to take out these low frequency frequency radar detectors to clear the path for the F-117s. Weapons and fuel tanks also had to be concealed internally to maximize stealth, but this also limited the capacity and also the range of the aircraft. Also, the F-117 actually carried no radar. This is because any radar, even when they're inactive, still reflects some of the incoming radar waves. Again, this is for stealth. But this meant that pilots couldn't detect threats in real time and also modify their flight plan accordingly. Now, this put them at a very dangerous 
dangerous position if they were ever confronted with an enemy aircraft because they didn't really have the advantage to dogfight or even get out of the line of fire. But later aircrafts like the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Lightning II were able to have the best of both worlds, that is, a stealth and defense system and also be powerful enough to survive in a dogfight. And on top of this, they had more advanced weapon systems as well. And the F-117 was beginning to lose its biggest advantage of stealth as well, because just a few years after its production, the US began to invest in a new stealth bomber aircraft, but this time made with supercomputers that were able to generate shapes and perform calculations far faster and better than humans ever could. This plane eventually became the B-2 Spirit. For these reasons, the F-117 was retired in 2008, but instead of being sent to the junkyard or sent to museums around the world, they were actually sent back to their original climate-controlled hangars and their wings were disassembled. This was so that they could be preserved and remain flyable and potentially enter back into service at any point, and some are still being flown routinely even to this day. There were even rumors that the F-117 was secretly deployed to the Middle East in 2016, but this is still unconfirmed. So maybe one day the F-117 will make a comeback, or maybe already has and we just don't know about it. So there you have it, everything you need to know about the F-117 Nighthawk, a very unique looking plane with an even more unique history. So let me know what your thoughts are on this episode in the comments down below. And also give me some suggestions for airplanes you want me to cover in the future. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Also, there would be no sonic booms, again making the aircraft more stealth.